Once again, it's my joy to come to you with Heart of a Shepherd Daily Devotional. We are still in the book of Psalms where we will be for quite some time. Our scripture reading for today is Psalm 45 and Psalm 49. Now I've titled today's devotional, You Can't Take It With You. Again, I invite you to open your Bible to Psalm 45. Now I would highlight Psalm 45 with a subject title of Here Comes the Bride. In fact, notice in verse 1, if you would, what I would describe as the prelude to the coming of the bride. Now, Psalm 45, I think you'll find this uh, chapter a fascinating and beautiful study. In fact, it's my opinion, this is a messianic psalm. Now, you'll notice that the central subject of the psalm is the king, whom I believe is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah King. And so notice then, if you would, in verse 2 through 9, where we have the groom. Now, the groom here, I believe, again, is the Messiah King. Now, the king is described as fair and beautiful. He's also described as a warrior with a sword and arrows, verses 3 through 5. But then also, his throne is represented as that of one whose reign is perpetual, that is, forever, and one who is altogether righteous and hates wickedness. Well, those verses, verses 3 through 5, really are the exclusion of David. And so we ask ourselves, then, who can this be? And it is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, many of you are aware that the New Testament pictures Christ coming again as the groom coming for his bride. And so then notice with me verse 10 through 14. And here we have the summons of the Messiah King's bride. Let's follow this. Now, I believe again that the bride described in verses 10 through 14 is none other than the congregation of believers who are introduced in the New Testament as the bride of Christ. Ephesians chapter 5, Revelation chapter 19, and Revelation chapter 21 all present Christ's coming and the believers, the church, as the bride. Now, the bride of the king must leave her father's house to be devoted to her husband. You find that in verse 10 through 11. But the same is a parallel with believers. Just as the bride leaves her father's house, so too should believers separate themselves from the world and be wholly dedicated to, to the Lord as a living sacrifice, according to Romans 12. Now, believers are then to present themselves to the Lord like a bride, verse 13, whose clothing is of wrought gold. Now, the gold is a symbol, a type of purity. And so we understand that the bride of Christ, the bride of this coming bridegroom who is the king, is one that is to be virtuous, one of purity. And so the bride comes to the king, and we see the description of her robe in raiment of needlework. Well, so too the bride of Christ comes. He, he the bride, comes clothed in Christ righteousness, according to Philippians 3 and Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Now think about that for a moment. The description of this bride coming to the Messiah King is a description of one who is pure and holy, adorned for the bride, or for the groom, the bridegroom. Sadly, Unlike a bride clothed in Christ's righteousness, there are many believers and sadly many churches that have become nothing but spiritual harlots and they wear the rags of their failed works of righteousness as we read in Isaiah 64 and verse 6. Now, I invite you, just to interrupt this for a moment, to subscribe to heartofashepherd.com. There you can have an opportunity of finding questions from Psalm 45 that will encourage you to dig a little deeper in the study. And then briefly in Psalm 49, I've titled this chapter, Money Will Not Buy 
you happiness. Notice that Psalm 49 reflected the ponderings of a man who faced the reality that many of us avoid, and that is his own mortality. Regardless of what we amass in possessions or how rich or poor we may be, everyone will inevitably, verse 10, leave their wealth to others. Now, some by acts of charity and others by calling their lands after their own names in verse 11, hope that they might be remembered, that they might go to their graves, hoping that their legacy will live on after they are gone. And yet no one can escape the final reality, and that is death. Well, a closing thought for you today. I have officiated in four decades of ministry many funerals. And yet I've not seen a U-Haul truck or a trailer following a hearse to a cemetery. Now, a similar reality was noted by the psalmist in this chapter who observed that a dead man, and I'm going to quote verse 17, shall carry nothing away, his glory shall not descend after him. Well, the Apostle Paul in his letter to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6 observed the same truth, and he warned, beginning in 1 Timothy 6, verse 7, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. Therefore the exhortation, having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Again now, an admonition. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lust which drown men in destruction and perdition. And then finally, verse 10, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Well, I invite you once again to go to the website, heartofashepherd.com, And you'll notice that today's devotional ends with several questions that invite you to ponder the things that we've studied today. I want to thank you for being a part of this study with the Heart of a Shepherd, and I wish you God's blessing on the day. Thank you, and bye-bye.